Welcome back to McGonagall Hall in Philadelphia, where again, Temple leading by 16 over Rutgers in the NA 10 conference action here at halftime. And Mark Macon with those 16 points providing the difference. And I mentioned it, we found out Keith Hughes is out of the ball game just simply because he drew his second foul with 12 minutes left at half. And it's interesting to note that when he sat down, Temple's lead was only six points. Yeah, there's two schools that thought there, and I'm sure Bobby Wenzel thought that let's try to keep him out of the lineup, try to keep it close, and we'll have him for the whole second half when a good run. The problem was his teammates couldn't keep that lead, and it's now a 16-point disadvantage for Rutgers. Here's how they got there. Rutgers shooting 42% from the floor. Temple really burning it up, shooting 58%, and Macon 5 for 9. Temple 15 for 26. Rutgers only got the free throw line four times. Rebounds are even. Look at the turnovers. Temple just two turnovers in the yeah, first half. And they do it. They're getting good shots against Rutgers in the half-court set, and they're just killing them, handling the basketball, where Rutgers is throwing the ball over the gymnasium right now. And points off turnovers, 16 to 3. And look at the three-point shooting. John Cheney has seen his club do what he loves to see him do, not make any turnovers, force the other team to nine. They're plus seven turnovers in one half. Would you think that man has a 16-point halftime lead? Yeah. You know, this could be number 200 in the victory column for him here at Temple and it's just his ninth season. Overall, he has won 424 games and lost just 123 in 19 seasons as a head coach. He has won 199 at Temple in eight plus seasons. Doesn't lose very often. They especially don't lose here at McGonagall Hall in Philadelphia. Well, he is 73 and four in McGonagall Hall and the Owls are 125 and 11 in this building. Not bad. Not bad at all. Bacon to the baseline, won't take the shot. A nice fake car Starfin, and he skips. That's perfect continuity. Good move in penetration by Bacon. He swung the ball to Kilgore, swung it right over to Karstarfin. Nice move. Excellent patience by Temple. And the 18-point lead is the biggest lead of the ball game. Karstarfin is four for six in this game. Keith Hughes can get heated here. He's got to get it going. Well, he comes off the bench to start the second half now and scores in a hurry. He now has Great man-to-man -man by Rutgers. Let's see if Temple tries to get the ball to Mark Macon. Kilgore just breaks it down in the lane and picks up his ninth point. Nobody says much about Macon's strength. You notice how much zip he gets in the ball passing left-handed, just one-hand passes. Very strong, both hands, very quick with the basketball. He pounds that ball on the floor, and especially when he goes up for the jump shot, he'll pound it on the dribble to get, get in shooting position. Duncan, Smith. by Macon, saved by Duncan. Hughes for three. Well, Lumpkin came flying in for the rebound, and it came off the heel of the rim long. He had had a spectacular dunk right there. Car Starfin to Kilgore. Temple so patient. Now Strickland. Got to get the ball to Hodge. Give him the basketball. Let him go right at Dabs. He does, and there's some bumping in the lane. It's going to be a charge on Donald Hodge, and that's his third foul. But I don't think there's a three foul rule with Shady. I think he'll leave him in the line. But a good move by Donald Hodge. Good defense by Brent Dabbs. A little acting on Brent Dabbs' part, but he got the foul on Hodge. Hodge sat down with 8.47 left in the first half of his second foul. Now commits the third. They have 17 48 left in this game. Duncan's about to lose his trunks. I think he should pull those pants up a little bit. Thank God the shirt tails out. <laughs> To keep corner Daryl Smith and he got the three. Has he lost a leg for that uh, pass? No. This is for uh, family entertainment. 48 33 Temple. We almost saw something very unusual. We almost saw a player lose his trunks. Our Starfin with another three. He has 11 points tonight. What a Temple can get these three guards scoring the best, but we know making can. Of course, Starthin and Kilgore can do it. It's going to give Atlantic Center a lot of problems over the opposing teams. Dabs off balance and gets it off. The glass and down. He has eight points tonight. Inside scoring, Ruck 
Dobbs has got to get used and dabs off to make a run at Temple. Okay, Car Starkman has some range coming into this game. He had taken 78 shots this year, 57 of them threes. Now the lob is stolen by Dabs. He tried to throw a long lob to Strickland, and Dabs picked it off. Duncan will shoot it over Car Starkman and get it. Excellent anticipation by Dabs to steal the basketball. There was a good transition basket, which is probably good, so Temple can't set up that zone. Rutgers pushing the ball off the floor. To a 14-point deficit now. Rutgers has outscored Temple 7-3 to at the start of the second half. They outscored him 10-2 at the start of the game. And then Temple took it over. Hodge turns and scores. Donald Hodge has a half dozen points. And how about the soft touch from the junior 7-foot from Washington? Takes it out about 14 feet. Shows the shooter's touch. I'll tell you, I'm concerned about Duncan's trunks. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the lace or the string in the middle must have broken. I told you put on some weight, but now he's wearing extra large pants, I guess. Duncan starts the drive. Duncan too strong with a try and make it. Gets the rebound, flat-footed. Rutgers only got four offensive rebounds in the first half. Macon, it's a three. Mark Macon has 19 points in this game. That's his third three-point goal. And a timeout here with 15-26 left in this basketball game. And Temple has now stretched the lead to 19 points. Their biggest lead of the night. And that shot won't go. Strickland gets it out to Car Starfin, and here comes Temple. Macon in open court pulls up for a three and got it. Mark Macon has 22 points in this ball game, and Temple still shooting 100%. There was a lot of NBA scouts here in Philadelphia tonight to look at Keith Hughes and Mark Macon, and Mark Macon has not hurt himself. Dab fires it to the baseline to Smith. Temple up by 21 points at the moment. Biggest lead of the night. It's like every time they score now, we're saying that. Hughes insides out to Jones to Duncan, and Duncan's three-pointer is off the back of the rim to Dabbs. Dabbs needs help, and it's intercepted by Macon. Macon and Duncan down court, one-on-one, -on -one, and Macon's going to shoot the little turnaround jumper, and Temple has the first miss of the second half. Well, let's be critical. Mark Macon <laughs> lost the handle on the basketball. Smith in the middle, and Dabbs is all alone and missed the shot. Now Jones, and he's fouled by Strickland. Second first foul make that on Mark Strickland. Rutgers showing they're not going to give up. They're frustrated, but they're going back to the basket real hard in the last two possessions. They've got an offensive rebound, and this time they got two offensive rebounds on the same possession. So we talked about the injuries that Rutgers has gone through this year. Quite frankly, they're a better team than this. Oh, so they have good talent, and Wenzel, Coach Bob Wenzel of Rutgers will tell you he has talent. He just doesn't have enough players to even practice because every week someone else is hurt. That is the key to his team. If he can get everybody healthy in a couple weeks with a lot of practice and some games, they will be back. His team has taken some criticism, and Bob Wenzel's not happy with the criticism. Well, he said, if you just sit and examine what has happened to us, who we have lost, injury so far this year it really shouldn't be a mystery why we haven't been able to get a lot going and yet they came into this ball game seven and four three and one in the conference well people forget the first year at Rutgers he turns it around and everybody's extremely happy last year they couldn't get it together right now they have injury problems and the press is on his back easily they forget Hodge with an acrobatic turnaround jump shot hey what a move for a seven foot kid has great hands and gets his feet under him every time he makes hard moves to the basket you won't go to see a weak shot by Donald Hodge. Temple up by 23 points now. And the Owls just continue moving away. Turnover and a long pass to Macon who gives it up to Hodge. 10 for Donald Hodge. And Donald Hodge put a little bit extra on that. Was real excited about that particular shot. Temple is a tough team when you're down to come back like a team with Temple that plays that matchup zone and takes away the passing angles. Tough team to come back. Jones shot no, Dabs tried to tip a no, and Strickland has Car Starkman up in the middle of the court. The lob to Hodge, a little deep, and now the ball stolen away by Hughes. He was too deep under the basket to shoot it. Duncan, spin dribble and gets Smith on the baseline. Jones gets the screen from Hughes and scores. <laughs> 
this is a pace that's not bad right now for Rutgers Emily's chances of run and gun with them. Hopefully they can get Temple just running up and gunning. Temple misses shots, they get some trees, try to get back in the game. It's the only style that Rutgers has a chance to get back in the game. Greg Carter on the floor now for Rutgers. Car Starfin against Duncan. Kildor against Carter. Strickland hands to make it. 25 seconds left on the shot. Jeffrey with that three-point lead and 12 minutes and a half to play and no hurry to shoot. Thirteen on the shot clock. And now a foul down inside. Hodge was tangled up in there with Dabs, and Dabs is going to be called for his second personal foul. Shows a pretty good basketball team here. Temple was running and gunning a little bit with Rutgers. Then they got in the half court for a set. They had the concentration and the patience to run the set and pick up a foul on Rutgers. They're patient when they have to, and they can run if it's given by Rutgers. Macon got too deep under there. Dabs got his body on him and forced it. And now Strickland takes it right back. Oh, he tried to get a dunk and went down hard in the lane. He almost went over the defender. He's up and all right. He's called for the personal foul on the charge, and he almost got a lot more than the foul. He almost got hurt. We talk about Strickland being the best athlete on the floor. He tried to dunk. Strickland's coming out and spares in. And John Cheney is sitting Strickland down next to him and now not even looking at him. <laughs> there he said something to him. <laughs> he's not happy with that move right there. No. He not wasn't really. going to talk to him. Now he's talking but to now him. Now he's animatedly talking to him. And Duncan banks one in for three-point range. I don't know if I heard him call banker right there, but he threw it up and they'll take any kind of points they can get right now. Rutgers, as you see John Cheney, not real happy with Mark Strickland. Dean Dimopoulos, the assistant, talking to him right now. 14 points for Duncan now. 20-point lead for Temple with 11.41 left in this contest. Kilgore pulls up and fires. That's too strong. Spears trying to rebound it. Can't. Smith to Duncan for Rutgers. Three-point shot. Too strong. And Macon chases down the long rebound. See, Bob Wentzel can't be happy. He's down 20 points, 11-24, but he wants to play at least good offense and defense. He doesn't want it all. Duncan just rushing down and taking a three-point shot. Macon faces Smith on the wing. Quick move, and he pulls up and fires, and it's off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Smith, and Carl Scarfin takes it away. Hodge. Yeah. It's a three. Well, he's having a night. He has hit four three-point goals and has 14 points. What an added dimension. I think Rutgers needs another timeout. They're having problems here. And they take it here with 10.51 left in this basketball game. And Temple leading by 23 points at the break. What does Vic Karstarth in the point guard for Temple mean? He means 14 points in the game, seven assists, three rebounds. And you see his last three-pointer from distance from the pass from Donald Hodge. He's done it all for the Temple Owls this evening. Temple with 24 field goals and 18 assists in this game. Oh, that's great. I mean, they have moved the ball extremely well. A couple games they pr probably were selfish early in the season. They've moved it around to the open teammate, and he has stuck the basketball. Yeah, one dimension Car Starfin gives this team is the help that he gives Macon. Dabs with a turnaround shot that's going to fall, and Brent Dabs has 10. Remember the old cowboy movies when the hero was pinned down and the bad guys were shooting at him, and his sidekick would come along and get a couple of shots off and help him out? Car Starfin's kind of doing that for Mark Macon. He, his shooting is loosened Macon up a little bit, and then his passing gets in the basketball. Like the Lone, Lone Ranger and Tonka? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Boy, Rogers and Gabby Hayes, whoever. <laughs> Make him outside. Oh, Mark Macon got an air ball that time. Now that's a four shot. Mark Macon made his move, didn't have it, should have brought it back out. Jones off balance in the lane, throws up a hook, can't get it, and Dabs takes it off the glass, and he has a dozen points. Brent Dabs, the 6'10 transfer from Virginia. Brent Dabs has had a good ball game tonight. The center has been very aggressive on the offensive base. He's got a lot of second shots, and that's where he's getting his 10 points from. Spears all alone off the baseline, sticks the shot. Jim Spears with his fourth point of the night. 21 point lead, Rutgers, and there you see the clock. 9.35 left in this game. Daryl Smith with 
for our tips, fifth point of the ball game. with an 18-point lead. I think John Cheney just said that he's still in the ballgame. That's missed the second, but now Rutgers will get the sake of the basketball. Well, that, that could have, I don't know if that was a technical. Was it a technical or an intentional foul? It may have been intentional. We'll check it. It was a technical on the bench. Not a bad time to get one. No. It'll be reckless basketball with nine minutes to play. Now Duncan coming right back in the Rutgers lineup. It's an 18-point game at the moment. Well, Duncan almost didn't report. Earl Duncan is definitely playing on one foot. He's limping a lot of times. He's not as quick with the basketball as he normally is. He's had the ankle and foot problem in this five of the last five out of six games. Came back and played the last game. Duncan now covering Carr Starkin. Nathan. Hodge. Double team gets the shot. Can't carry it. And there's Kilgore down in the lane and scores. 11 points for Ben Kilgore. Well, it was good help defense by Rutgers, but about four guys went for the basketball. Is that the weak side rebounding wide open for Mick Kilgore to lay it back in? Smith from Duncan. Great look by Earl Duncan. He looked his man off and found Daryl Smith wide open. 70-52 Temple with 7.54 to play. Five assists tonight for Earl Duncan. He also has 14 points in the ball. Mark Making gets his 25th point on the evening. Just answers Earl Duncan's pass right back. Vic Carstark, and that'll be his first personal foul. A sophomore from Camden, New Jersey. A transfer from Cincinnati. His first personal foul. Charlie Wilder, number 33. Charlie Wilder checks back in with the Rutgers lineup now. Pass will be coming out. We have time out with 7-14 left in this basketball game, and Temple with a comfortable 21-point lead. Foul in front of the Scarlet Knights by 21. <laughs> Travel arranged through Eastern Airlines, the airline which invites you to buy a coach ticket, pay a coach price, and then take off in the comfort of first class. Eastern, with service that's second to none. Temple in the year shoots 43% from the field. Tonight, how about 59%? Every Temple player over 50% from the field. Every one of them. That's kind of amazing. Often you'd find that. Car Starfin moves by Duncan to the baseline. Try to get it to Macon, and Macon is going to get it back out of there. 
John Cheney just dancing on the sideline. And now we've got Hodge and Weiler tangled up down inside. And I think they got Weiler for the personal foul that time. Well, the referees are going to take over the basketball game. They don't like what's going inside. They're going to call it tight. The Lenny Ken Conference back. Sue Wicks of Rutgers won the 1988 Nesmith Award as the Women's Basketball Player of the Year. And Temple has won more Lenny Ken regular season men's titles for than any other school. That's basketball titles, I should clarify basketball. Right now, they look like they're going to defend their Atlantic 10 title the way they're playing this evening. Or just consistently an outstanding program. John Cheney has averaged 24 wins a year here after being sub-500 his first year here. He built that program in such a hurry. He's kept it there. Making it heavy traffic off balance and just got it up so softly. And Macon now has 27 points in this ballgame. Very difficult to stop a man to man if you're not going to make him pick up the dribble and show a little double team. Very tough to stop one on one. Macon's career high 35. He may surpass that in this game. We have six minutes and 12 seconds to play. Hughes double team misses. Hodge has the rebound. Okay, well, if they wanted to start going to Macon, he could get a bunch. I don't know if he has a personal vendetta against Rutgers or what. He, he lights them up every time he plays them. We mentioned he'd average 29 against him in his last four ball games, and here he is with 27 tonight. Kill go It's foul by Donnell Lumpkin. First foul on Lumpkin stops the clock with 5.51 to play. I really don't think Mark Macon is the least bit concerned with things like records. He's already the leading scorer in Temple history. The first 2,000 point scorer here. He's a very focused young man, especially on the winning, uh, as we said, John Cheney, a winning attitude. He listens to the coach intently. He said he'd like to be a clone of that man, John Cheney, right there. Very intense individuals, both John Cheney and Mark Major. Kilgore has a dozen points, six assists, and five rebounds in this game. He quietly put together a very strong game. Well, he and Dick Karstarthen have been absolutely perfect playing the role for Mark Makin's team. Well, I mentioned earlier, 6'8", Kilgore is so versatile. He can go out and play a guard for you, and has. He can do so many things. 5.45 left in this basketball game. And Temple up by 25 and cruising. 25 matching the biggest wave of the night. Rutgers got off to the 10 to 2 lead and then began misfiring. Duncan, nice spin move, bad foot and all. Smith can't get the shot down. Strickland clears the rebound and the double team at the baseline and a foul against Daryl Smith. Now, if you're the coaching staff of Rutgers, what can you do there? Good ball to move, and Earl Duncan makes a nice pass here. Wide open, just there's a lid on the rim, boom, doesn't go in. And Strickland grabs the rebound, and you'll see the foul. Takes good care of the basketball. Our Scarfin against Duncan. Lincoln runs around the screen from Hodge. Smith chased him through the screen. Lincoln gets it up to Carl Starvin, gets it right back. Donald Hodge is working. Look at the facial. He wants the basketball. He shows he wants it badly. He got it. And gives it right back to Macon off the baseline, and he's fouled as he takes the shot. John Cheney came flying off the bench and says something to an official over there. The official is like, okay, I call the foul. There's a good hand by Hodge. He'll give it right back, good pass to Macon. He'll get him on the elbow. But the big guy's in the side. But they don't see the basketball. They're not into the game defensively and on the offensive end. They want it. They're going to work that hard. In their man, you've got to give them the basketball. That's the fourth foul on Daryl Smith. He comes out of the game. Mark Macon will go to the line. He's four for four on the free throw line tonight. 28 points now for Mark Macon. Could tie his season high right here. Macon perfect at the line. Nine for 16 from the floor tonight. This will be his... 10th straight solid shooting game. Now that free throw doesn't go. He knew it when he put it up. Did you see him come yeah. flying down the lane? He's not happy. He's only shooting 68.6% from the free throw line. He should be in the high 70s, almost 80%. He has the pass this year. He's struggling from the foul line. Duncan, nice fake. Got Macon off his feet. The shot just simply won't go down. And Dabbs takes it back up. Knocked loose from behind. And a whistle blowing on the baseline. 
I mean, that was a real nice move by Earl Duncan. Great first step to get wide open. Just couldn't get it, but Dabbs is staying on the board. They're hanging in there. Rutgers trying to Play run their half-court offensive set. Bacon with a season-high 28 points in this game. Now Michael Harden comes back on the floor for Temple. Vic Carstarfin sits down. 14 points, 8 assists, and 6 steals tonight for Vic Carstarfin. The transfer from Cincinnati putting together a solid night. Vic Carstarfin went to Camden High School. Camden is right across the river from Philadelphia. He's, Camden has had great high school basketball teams. He's the first Camden player to ever come to play in the city of Philadelphia. Yeah, Lewis Banks from Cincinnati from that same exactly. high school. Camden. Uh, Milt Wagner. Milt Wagner and the other, uh, I'm trying to think of a place for the Orlando Magic, I believe, down there in the Miami Heat. And they won the NCAA at Louisville. Billy, Billy Thompson. Thompson, you got it. Very good. Both from uh, Wagner and Thompson the same team. Yeah, Louisville. Okay. Yeah. Same team in high school. Same team in high school. And in Louisville. Or is it Louisville? Louisville. Louisville. Left-handed dribble in the lane, tried to reverse it, Dabbs got it. And knocks it down. Hughes, power move into the lane, and a foul is going to be called against Temple as Hughes came into the lane with some aggression. Now they have uh, Hughes listed at six, eight and a half. That's a nice move in the open floor. The big guy will show people that he can put the ball on the floor. Michael Harden has four fouls. He may do something very rare for a Temple player. He may foul out. Strickland is the only Temple player to foul out of a game this year. Hughes open from the corner and sticks it. Oh, that's a nice shot. He has nine points tonight. And now making trip by Lunkin as they come to midcourt. And Donnell Lunkin is called for his second foul. See, when a big guy can score a lot of points, you come and play Temple. Temple with that matchup zone, especially playing the zone, can take you out of the game. Especially if your teammates are not shooting the ball from the outside. So what's happened tonight is Temple's done such a great job taking the key views out of the game. And he also got an early goal. Lumpkin on the bench. Hughes of the nine is low point total of the year, and this game's not over. Four minutes to go. He may get in double figures before the night ends. Temple just does that to you in that matchup. Harden. We well, said at the start of the game that they were going to have to get the shooting over the zone, and they haven't been able to get it. Now a shot blocked in there by Dabson. Oh, great spin to move by Duncan. And he gives it up. At the other end, the basket good by Daryl Smith, and Duncan made the play. And that's real nice. Earl Duncan playing on one foot. I mean, he loves to go up and down the floor. As you saw the great quickness and the real good ball hand on. He can push the basketball up the floor. As we'll see Duncan pushing up. He's limping a little bit. Great spin move to go by Macon. Sees his teammate wide open up front, and Daryl Smith gets the chance for three points. Strickland committed his fourth foul. Did you see the look he was giving Duncan there? Like, hey, I thought you had a bad foot. How'd you make that move? Oh, Earl Duncan, obviously, a great player, just can't get it going right now with the one foot. The other foot, he's limping all over the floor. And Duncan completes the three-point play. We have three minutes, 39 seconds left in this game. And at the moment, Temple up by 20. Iona beat LaSalle tonight, 77-74. Not to surprise, LaSalle has been playing very good basketball, but I guess when you go on the road, anything can happen. 3.39 left in this one, 78-59, Temple. And on Thursday will be at George Washington. The Owls, in fact, will drive down there tonight after this game, Temple and George Washington, 9 o'clock Eastern time on the Atlantic 10 Network. GW with the new coach, Coach Jarvis, down there doing a nice job for the Colonel. Keith Hughes earlier with nine points at his low this year is 13 against Princeton. 13 against well, Princeton is a big, big yeah, night. I was going to say it's like I'm 50. <laughs> <laughs> Petey Carroll doesn't get that basketball up very often when you play Princeton. <laughs> Just triple whatever you do against those guys. Wouldn't want to play a steady diet of Princeton every night. No. That would be no fun. Macon. It has 28. Nice spinning move, and the shot won't fall for him. Strickland tipped it. Hodge is there and has it. Now took it down low, and there's a scramble for the ball, and it's going to be out of bounds. Strickland was sitting out of bounds when the ball touched him. Tell you what, if you're seven feet tall and take the ball to the floor, you become about three feet tall. Everybody has a whack at it down there. 
that's what happened that time to Donald Hart. Now Rutgers back within 19, 248 left in the game. A chance to make it look a bit more respectable here. Shot blocked by Strickland. Tried to get it outside, and Kilgore couldn't make the catch. It'll be Rutgers basketball in front of their own bench. And you can see Mark Strickland like that. And what he did well, too, is when he blocked the shot, he knocked it to a teammate. Nick Kilgore just wasn't ready with the hands, but that's a good move if he can block it to a teammate and get the turnover. Rutgers still battling on the boards down there, but so they just can't get the shot to fall. Well, I'm sure at that time out, Bobby Wentzel said, hey, fellas, I don't care if we're down 19. You better play hard because we want to work on some things and just play hard. You have your pride. Yeah, we got a long way to go this year, and there's some playing time on the line oh, here. Oh, a lot of playing time. Macon to Harden at midcourt with 2.29 left in the game. Harden fouled from behind by Earl Duncan. Rutgers fouls on number three, Earl Duncan. But it's very frustrating when you have a team like Rutgers who does have individual talent, but you don't really have the consistent outside shooting. Teams are going to play that zone and pack it in until Bob Wentzel and his team show that they can knock this shot down. I don't know if there's anything more discouraging for a basketball team than poor shooting. Michael Harden's just banked in a free throw. Take a look, Coach. You won't say that every night either. It's not a collapsible backboard because that would have went right through the backboard. Chris Lovelace now replaces Donald Hodge for Temple. Maybe the only more discouraging for a basketball team than bad shooting is not being able to get up court against a press and just never really getting it across midcourt. But boy, bad shooting can really take the steam out of it. Now Dabs is fouled in the lane by Chris Lovelace, who just came off the bench. First on Lovelace. You, you could see this evening that they didn't really work the ball as well as they would like to. Again, that is from a lack of practice with, with the same unit on the floor. There's no real continuity right now because of all the injuries. Well, Keith Hughes comes out of the game with nine points. He sat down at the 12-minute mark of the first half with two fouls. And came back to score four in the second half, so that may be his season low. And now coming off the bench for Temple, Jan Post, the seven-foot senior from Holland. This is great. He's got a little smile on his face as the fans love him. And then we place Mark Strickland, who had nine points left. I don't know about this. Now, Jan Post is from Christian Agrarian High School in Holland. But he come to Temple to learn how to farm some more or what? <laughs> I don't know how he got here. Two sixteen left in this game. Now Rutgers substitution for Charlie Weiler from Haddonfield, New Jersey. Across the river will check back in. Dabs coming out of there to finish the night with 13 points and seven rebounds. Is that an old trick or what? <laughs> Foul somebody the minute you get in there and you're not zeros across the board in the paper. Right here he gets, he almost gets away with it. He didn't get the ball, he got oh, the Rutgers player on the back. Lamoureux misses, Andre Lamoureux, a 6'10 junior from Los Alamitos, California, over the Cypress Community College. Is that name she played in hockey? Yes. However, that height, it may be a problem. <laughs> Just take up the whole goal. 79-60 Temple now as Harden approaches midcourt. Gets double teamed and clears it in a hurry to kill for Just a minute 54 left in this basketball game. Harden making turn down a three right there. I think they want Jan Post to get the basketball to fans. <laughs> they want him to fire one up. Get it, Jan. 17 on the shot clock. First, they have to get it to him. The crowd chanting, Jan, Jan. Harden to Macon. Going to go for a three. And that one's off. The field of Post battling for the rebound. Lamoro has it. And Post has a foul. <laughs> you know, I remember about Jan Post. Remember the free overtime game up at, I know you do, up at UMass last year. Game and in the third overtime, we had a shot of John Cheney talking very animatedly to Post on the bench. And, he, and John Post had a little smile on his face, like, Coach, I really didn't have him to do anything in this game. He was letting his frustrations out. You see Mark making this, and John Post is just pushing Hammerer from behind. And he's going to get in the score again. He's two fouls now in that box score tomorrow. But the fans here at Temple want Jan Post 
the this center for Temple to fire one up there to get some points. Mark Redden and Creighton Drury are now on the floor for Rutgers. Redden had started a couple of games at guard. He's realistically about the fifth guard on his team, and that's evident of the, of the injury problems they've had at Rutgers that he was starting for. Amaro missed the free throw, tries it again. He has two points, and it's an 18-point lead to Temple with a minute 25 to play. to Harden and they're going to turn it over with a minute one left in the game. Temple was something very rare, a turnover, their seventh turnover tonight. They had just two in the first half. John Cheney won't like that very much. No, they're averaging 10 on a per game on the season. Only seven here. Stokes for Rutgers, outside to Redden. Brayton Drury tried to drop it down inside and Lamaro got a shot up. Was it, no, it wasn't Lamaro, it was Weiler that got the shot up and got fouled. Charlie Wilder will go to the free throw line with 50 seconds left in the game. Well, it's only January 8th, but one team is improving, obviously, the Temple Owls. The other team, Rutgers, he's just trying to get them healthy, Bob Wenzel, and then hopefully they will improve also. Could be dangerous. Oh yeah, it's frustrating when you go to the gym to practice and you don't have enough players to really practice with the key players. Somebody's always hurt. But we've seen them come down to tournament time. They're always in that tournament. Post gets a rebound and a roar hooks up from the crowd here at McConnell Hall. Oh, they'd love to see him score. Harden keeps looking in there at him, trying to gain the ball. shot no tip cry Lovelace good Chris Lovelace able to tip it back in for his first two points of the night and now Rutgers turns it over with 25 seconds to play and the crowd starts shouting for Jan chanting for Jan Post again Harden starts to drive and has the ball knocked loose and a foul is called I think Post has touched the ball. <laughs> His teammates are not going to give him the basketball. He's touched the ball once and Rutgers players twice. <laughs> has one rebound and two fouls. That foul was on Mark Redden. And Michael Harden's free throw is good. Second point of the night. Just 16 seconds left to play in this ball game. 362 Temple. And Harden lets Redden go by. He pulls up and launches a three to won't go. Post grabs the rebound and is called for charging his third foul. Mark Macon of Temple has been named our player of the game. We'll tell you more about that. This game has been brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And there's the ball game. 83-62. Temple defeats Rutgers. And Temple goes to 8-3 on the year. And 3-0 and on the Atlantic 10. While Rutgers will fall to 7-5 and and to 3-2. and two. Final again. 83-62. Temple over Rutgers. We'll bring you right back to McGonagall Hall. Rutgers 83-62 here in McGonagall Hall, and again they go to 8-3 on the year, add to 3-0 in the Atlantic 10, while Rutgers falls to 7-5, and 3-2 and and in conference play, and now Temple will leave after this game to head down to George Washington University with a play on Thursday night, and we'll have that one on television for you. So again, Temple with the 83-62 win, let's go to the floor, and Ed Stefanski. John, the first half you played well in a stretch, I, I don't know if you know the statistic, but you shot 55% from the floor tonight. That's, that's extraordinary. <laughs> right, for your team. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to look at this tie. This tie did it. I, I can't understand that. That's, uh, that's extraordinary. And uh, I thought that, uh, you know, Rutgers got off to a real good start in uh, causing us to spread a little bit to pick up the threes. And 
they're a real tough ball club uh, with Hughes and Lumpkin and that group. They're really good. Yeah, and they, I don't know if you're aware, they had a lot of injuries early in the season. They haven't had a lot of players. Earl Duncan's hurting, and uh, yeah. uh, the guards especially. Yeah, well, I knew that uh, uh, Duncan had a problem with his foot earlier, and I was surprised to see him start because I thought Redden would start for them, you know. But I know that Bobby's had some problems with him, uh, with injuries. But uh, they're going to come around. They're going to be tough. You know that. Yeah, are you happy with the balance? You're getting a lot of balance scoring now. Well, I think a lot of it was due to uh, Donald playing as well as he did in the post for us. Uh, that sort of like meant that they had to help out. And, of course, it left a lot of open spaces for Victor and a lot of open spaces for Mark. I think also a key was Kilgore did a great job of penetrating and getting into the seams for us. Uh, which he has not been doing. He's been throwing up those Hail Marys outside. <laughs> I know you don't love to play because of the personnel and you're worried about foul trouble, but you're showing a little man-to-man -man sometimes out there. Well, we have to. I think that the, uh, you know, with the fact that you're talking about the, the three-point rule and the, the ten, ten foul situation in terms of getting ten fouls, you're shooting two. Those are two things that I try to stand in the middle on and worry about constantly. But that three-point shot is something that's causing a lot of us coaches to do some changing in terms of not just matchups, but we're facing a situation where we've got to disguise when we come out with man. Now you're going down to GW facing a new coach. Do you know much about Coach Jarvis and what he'll run against you? No, I don't know too much. I haven't had an opportunity to, to look at him. We've been so busy lucky, looking at the uh, uh, film on, uh, on Rutgers. But uh, we're going to leave here tonight, and we'll, we'll take a chance of looking at him and get to work uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, but I don't know too much about him. I know that they played some real good ball games and some good teams recently. John, congratulations. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Our forward player of the game, let's bring him in now, is Mark Macon. And, Mark, you had a big night, 28 points, and you shot the ball extremely well again. Well, uh, that, was, that was just due to the openings that uh, Donald and uh, Mick gave us early in, early in the game. You know, and uh, I just got my shot, and I was in, the, in, the, in my rhythm. You know, you're getting tired of hearing it probably your freshman year, your sophomore year, your junior year, your shooting percentage. But this year, shooting percentage is up there. Uh, would you, Vic Kristarthin, uh, Mick Kilgore, they're scoring more balance points. Is that helping you? Well, of course. And uh, I don't really worry about my shooting percentage any, uh, too much. You know, uh, statistics is not what we're worried about. We're worried about uh, getting wins and playing great defense, you know, because we're going to be playing great teams throughout the year. You know, every team is coming to get us. So we got to be ready to play and play hard and play to win. You get a lot of opportunities from the three-point line. Do you prefer that shot, or would you look for the penetration at times also, or do you love that three-pointer? Well, I'll, I'll take both. You know, anything that uh, the defense gives me, I'll try to take. Now, you've, you're going in the Atlantic 10. You're the defending, defending champs, 2-0 uh, and o in the A-10, now 3-0. and o. Uh, Rutgers coming in, they're a little hurt tonight. Well, I don't think they, they didn't look hurt to me. You know, they came out and they played real tough. You know, and they always play tough defense. You know, uh, I think uh, with, the, with the play of Donald inside, like Coach said earlier, you know, it helped us out uh, a lot outside. And, and that really hurt them, hurt them, you know, because they couldn't get outside. Mark, good luck against GW. Thank you. That's Mark Macon, our forward player of the game. And tonight, Fred, it was all Temple, that matchup zone defense, just set, shut down the Scarlet Knight of Rutgers. Rutgers got it off to that 10 to 2 start, and then Temple really did take it over from that point, and again went on to win it. 83 62, the Owls over the Scarlet Knights, and we'll be right back. As Stefanski may be in the final analysis tonight, Temple was just out there being Temple. Well, I think one thing they've shown is the way they're shooting the basketball. Over the years, a John Cheney coach team here at Temple did not shoot the basketball well. Tonight and the past few games are shooting in the 50%. If they can shoot the basketball like that and the way they play defense it's going to be a long year for a lot of Atlantic 10 teams. A lot of people, you're exactly right. And Temple again making that move toward defending their Atlantic 10 conference title off to a solid start in conference play. Tonight taking that conference record at 3-0 and and now heading to GW we'll take a look at them Thursday night. I'm anxious to see that team play. Yeah, GW with new coach Jarvis, he'll do a good job but Temple right now is awfully tough and if they play in that half court set, a lot of teams are going to have a lot of problems. 83-62 Temple, the final score here tonight and again we'll have Temple and George Washington on Thursday night at 9 o'clock Eastern Time from the Smith Center in Washington, D.C. Tonight's game has been a presentation of Creative Sports Marketing. The executive producer has been Mike Wells. The producer for tonight's game has been Dennis Galloway. Our director, Mike Kobin. The associate director tonight has been Becky Solomon. And our facilities coordinator has been Ann Crago.